Hello inventors, welcome back to the course. In the last video, I mentioned that you can get started with embedded systems without the knowledge of embedded hardware with something called as development boards. This video is all about exploring the world of development boards. Along with the development boards, we will also look at the software side of our toolkit. That is the apps we will use to develop embedded software. Now the proper way to proceed would be to give you guys some theoretical introduction and then go on the practical stuff. But I'm sure you cannot wait to see what we can do with these development boards. So I decided to take a different approach. First, let us take a look at what can be done with these development boards, aka the possibilities. And then we'll try to understand the world of development boards, aka the theory. Let's start with a quick demo of the applications you can develop with these development boards. No doubt you would have noticed how your phone's display rotates between landscape and portrait modes, depending upon the way you hold your phones, assuming you have not logged the orientation, of course. But have you ever wondered, how does your phone know which way is up? If that question ever popped up in your heads, then I assume you are born to be an embedded engineer. The device responsible for sensing the orientation is a sensor named as accelerometer. Accelerometer, as the name suggests, measures acceleration. No doubt you have learned in your physics class about something called as acceleration due to gravity. The accelerometer can sense which way gravity is acting on your phone and using that information, it can tell our phones which way is up. So why I'm talking suddenly about accelerometer? Because the development board that we are going to use in this course also comes with an accelerometer sensor. The name of the development board is the discovery board. The accelerometer is the chip under the microcontroller inside the red square as shown in the picture. Also, there are four small LEDs lights which are marked by using the red circles in the picture. For this demo, I have programmed the discovery board with the code that controls the accelerometer. Let's have a small demo. Notice how the LED shifts directions every time I rotate the development board. Magic! Playing with sensors, using physics concepts, and writing the code, that is what embedded engineering is all about. Exciting stuff, right? Another common use of accelerometer is in our smart watches to count our steps. Yet other application areas include VR headsets, aircrafts, cameras, etc. We have an entire article dedicated to this sensor where we have explained each of the applications in detail and also explained how these sensors do what they do. You can find the link for the same in the video description. Accelerometer is not the only sensor that this board has. It also has a microphone for recording audio, a gyroscope for detecting rotations, and a compass for detecting direction. You can also get a headphone jack for listening to the audio. The exact name of this board is STM32F411E Disco. You don't need to buy one for this course, as this course is designed in such a way that all you need to do is watch the videos with maximum attention. Just in case, if you wish to get yourself a toy, you can find our affiliate link to buy this from Amazon in the video description below. If you are enjoying this video so far and wish to support us, please hit the like button so that the YouTube algorithm will spread this course to more wonderful minds like yours. On the software side of our embedded development toolkit lies a class of app called as an IDE. IDEs, which stands for Integrated Development Environments, is basically an app that you can install on your laptops. We can use this app to do stuff like writing code, uploading the code we have written to our development boards, and debugging the code running on our development boards. The best part is you don't need to pay for this either. This is usually available as a free download on manufacturer's website. Let us take a look at a quick demo of the IDE that we are going to use in this course. 
The app is called STM Cube IDE. We will call this app as IDE for the rest of this video. In the center of the app, you can see the code editor section. In this section, we can write code. This section is not so special as other editor apps like Atom and Visual Studio Code. Those can usually do a much better job than these IDEs. The interesting part starts when you are done writing code. After writing, the next step is to compile and link the code, which is the process of taking all the C and H files and roll them up into one single file ready for upload, assuming you wrote the code in C. In IDE, all you need to do is press this hammer button here and voila, the IDE starts the build process for you, assuming you did the project setup part correctly. You can see the progress of the build process in this console section here, right below the editor section. A few moments later, you get this message build finished and you're ready to upload the firmware. How to do that? How to take a file from your computer and transfer that to the development board. Simple, just connect the development board to your PC via an USB cable and press the green play button here. The IDE will do its magic in the background and get your code into your development board. You can view the progress in the same console window and then download completes with the message download verified successfully. Just like that, our code is now running on the development board. One thing to note and appreciate here is the fact that ID has made the complicated process of building and uploading the firmware into very simple button clicks. After uploading the firmware is when the real fun begins. Say you made a mistake in your code and your code does not work as expected. The best way to figure out where the mistake is, is to execute the code one line at a time and figure out the line of code which does not do what we intend it to do. To do that, just click the bug button here and wait for the code to finish downloading. Bug usually refers to the mistake in the code and debugging is the process of correcting the mistakes. Notice how the windows inside the IDE app changed a bit. This new arrangement of windows is called as the debug perspective which is just a fancy name for arranging the windows in a way which makes it easier to correct any mistakes in code. Once the IDE is ready, you will see something like this. You can use this button here called step over to execute one line at a time. It can be used to execute the present line of the code. If that line is a function, you can also use this button called step in to start executing the function one line at a time. At any time, you can leave the function using this button called step out. Say you don't wanna go step by step from the beginning to the end of your code, but you are interested in a specific portion in the middle of your code. For example, say you are specifically interested in a particular function. You can do that by setting what is known as a breakpoint. Just double click on the side of the editor at the line of the code you want to have a closer look at and a red button will appear as shown. Now, whenever this line of code gets executed, the debugger will stop the microcontroller and you can examine what is going on there. You can see stuff like what the values of variables are just by hovering your mouse over the variable name, what does the CPU registers contain, what does the peripheral registers contain? And what is the value in RAM at the moment? With this much capability, fixing mistakes, aka the debugging process becomes a breeze. If you're feeling a little bit lost with all the jargons I have used in this video, it is completely normal. Just give this video one more go after you complete this course and you will understand exactly what each word meant. All right, hit that like button if you like this video. Subscribe if you haven't already. I hope this was a good introduction to the Embedded Development Toolkit. Thank you for watching and I will see you inventors in the next video.